What's up guys? Today, hopefully, I'm finally gonna climb a lot in Gold 4. I have been going back and forth and having win and loss streaks, but I think I will at least get a little bit um, continuous improvement from now on. I feel like I figured it out, but we will see. I'm kind of like uh, sadly gonna say it, but we're gonna go back to Staldus. I keep going back to Staldus even though he doesn't have enough damage or utility. And I wish I had something else, but we have to go with Staldus. If I have the Staldus, then I can at least pick him against Rodos sometimes. And I don't always have to blind pick Rodos against UDK and Harima. So that's gonna be the plan that worked in the last couple of days. Hopefully it will work on the video, but we will see. Also, kind of exciting things that in the last couple of days on Narsus, I got kind of lucky and I got the one star blessing from the split solo shop, which is 7k HP. Then I also got the Ascension finally on my chest and boots. I think it took around yeah, 8 attempts on the chest and how many on the boots? Around 10 on both, I guess. Yeah, 11 on boots. Only thing I'm missing at this point is banner. And then I have everything with HP Ascension. And he's starting to look a lot better than a week ago. He got like 20k HP while staying at the same speed. I'm not sure if it's gonna make that big difference often in live arena, but I think it's gonna make difference in the next classic arena bush. So this week I only got 250 and I was expecting to do way better, but my defense didn't really work out and I failed a bit in offense as well, but I'm still kind of hopeful that I feel like it might be possible to get top 20 again. At least I'm gonna try, but we will see what happens next week. Also, I'm super excited about the Armand's fusion. I saw Drog's video and I heard that many people are very afraid of him and feel like he's OP, which I agree that he's very strong. But the way I think about it, like from my perspective, at least he wasn't the Void champion. They're giving that champion to everybody. Looking at the kit, I would never believe that it's gonna be a fusion champion. And it's not, it's not even going to be Void Champion, but it's non-Void 1 and a Fusion that everybody gets. So I'm pretty excited. I'm definitely going to use him. I think everybody is going to use him. I think I have very good build on him as well. So I'm very, um, very excited to try it out. But I guess it's going to take me several weeks to finish off the Fusion. So not going to happen anytime soon. But I have insane build for him because... I have two stone skin accessories on Barbarians and I can basically do like a 6p stone skin with 2p perception and it's gonna be insanely fast. There's like four different items with what roll and then a couple items with a double roll, a triple roll on speed. But basically it is probably gonna be my fastest build ever in the game. And I'm super excited to see how it works in practice, but maybe I will be disappointed or maybe he's always picked by other people. We will see. But there has been so many OP champions in the game in the past year. Like right now we're getting new primal champions and we get one OP champion every other week. So I'm not too faced about it, though I understand why. Many people are doomsdaying about the champion and so on. I saw in Drog's video that he's afraid that uh, he's gonna have fights where he's never gonna get the turn if the enemy has that champion. Well, that, that happens to me like multiple times on every video. So I'm not too I'm not too afraid of that happening because I'm used to it at this point. So Mikage can pretty, pretty much do it and especially if they have both Sifi and Mikage, which my I mean, if they have Mikage, then they're gonna have Sifi as well, because I don't have Sifi, and Sifi is the first pick, first pick for pretty much everybody in Live Arena. Unless they're specifically 
first picking something that, that I pick, but outside of that it's almost universal first pick for every single person in the game that has her, so... So they're, they're all best gonna be together, basically. If I meet Amikage. Also, I've been using Angora quite a lot in Live Arena in the last couple of days, and I kind of changed my mind about her. I feel like she's um, even better without her partner than I originally thought on my first video. I kind of found new ways to use her, and I was mostly using her in fights where the enemy has lots of CC. Her passive in combination with the A2 is actually very useful in those kind of situations. It's not just for Narses, but basically any nuker with her that has the highest crit damage in the team, they are not going to take any CC and it makes it a lot more consistent. Okay, I, I think we're we're gonna find. Uh, yeah, I don't know if it's like a joke or it's actually Anda's 29th alt account. Some people are saying it is, but does he really have 29 accounts? But this account is a bot. Pretty sure it's gonna first ban my dots, but we, we will see. The, the bots are always going for your ban on the first pick, so. Okay, actually, let's let's test if it's a bot. Um, if it's not a bot, he's definitely gonna pick UDK now. But if it's a bot, then he's... Wait, never mind. I'm dumb. He needs to pick two nukers anyway. He couldn't go with UDK in the first place, but I'm pretty sure it's a bot, though. But not sure if, if it's gonna be a free win, though, because it's a crazy account with everything empowered and <laughs> both Sifi and Yumeko are with 6 star blessing and em empowerment but at least I'm pretty sure it's not manually played by him so it's gonna give us a little bit um, handicap against him yeah yeah might as well go with Angora in this fight Also, if I go with Ankara, and if I'm like last picking Rotos, which I'm basically doing nowadays, instead of forcing it on the early picks and then going against UDK, Lockout and Harima in every fight, but if I take it as one of the later picks, um, Rotos, I don't have to go for UDK. Often I will not go for him at all. And if I really need protection against the CVA1, Ankora can do it as well, and Ankora can often provide more general utility, so I generally actually prefer using her at this point. Ah, reaction broke on the Leorios. Well, I'm sure he has like um, full reaction, probably. I mean, he gets, he wins every CBC, so. Probably has more reaction than I do. Anyway, I might sound a little bit tired on this video, but I mentioned this before that basically the way it works out that um, if I don't have the video done on the day before, and if I don't do it on the first time slot that is available, ev available, which is basically 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. my time. If I don't do it at that time, then the next time slot is at from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. and then it's gonna take me like three hours to actually process the video and get it up on YouTube. And by that time it's so late that um, the video is not gonna get any views because the um, peak time for viewership is over. So. Basically, if I don't have video prepared, I need to play at this time, or it's not even worth making live arena video that day. And I didn't make one for a few days in a row, because I kind of wanted to best, now that I'm in gold 4 and so on. 
But also, I've been kind of hectic with my sleep schedule. I I already had it totally normal, but then I screwed it up again. And basically, basically what I'm saying is that I barely, barely slept tonight again, which has happened to me way too many times lately. But it is what it is. When I started to make videos more seriously, I have done a lot of... Um, videos other than just the ones that you can actually see on my channel. It was a bot, so let's not get too happy about that win. But um, yeah, I've been doing that stuff and then some other stuff. And yeah, basically I've been no lifing, so I've been, I've been sleeping whenever it has been convenient. And that means that my, in the last two weeks, let's say, my sleep schedule has been totally Totally screwed. Yeah, it, it is kind of first world problems, but it is what it is. Raid has been very fun lately though. Like, we got the Narcissus and I got a lot of progression on, on my account and so on, but I don't know if I... I probably don't want to go with both. I, I think he's gonna go with Trotos, but I don't want to go with both Ankara and U UDK. I mean, he, he has the UDK, but... Um, should I pick Wukong right now? No, I'm, I'm not gonna do it. I think he's gonna go with Trotos and Harima. Something pretty common that people like to pick against me that is very effective. Okay, I think that's gonna be a new Wukong. If it was support one and had accuracy, it probably would be in Polymorph, so I'm gonna assume it's a new build. And of course, picking UDK so that he can't be blocked by the. so that the Wukong can't be blocked by the UDK would make sense if it was a new build, so. I don't think I want to go with Rodos at this point. Might be a very hard fight. Yeah, we we have to go with Staldos on this one. I don't think I really want to go with... Um, yeah, I don't think Heligat or Xen are options here either. He has the Harimo passive and he has the block buff debuff from Wukong, so... We had to go with the Staldos that I was kind of afraid of doing today. Oh. Is that a support Wukong or did he go with Triple Nuker? But that means that we can totally ban his CV, which is a luxury that I normally can never afford to do. Usually they have like Lockout and something else that I really have to ban. But I guess this time we can basically ban whoever we want. Since I didn't go for Rotos and I'm not I'm not cocked by the UDK passive or the Harma passive. It, it is better this way, even if I revert to going first pick or early pick Rotos sometimes, but I need to mix it up a little bit so I'm less predictable and it's a bit harder to counter me because I'm making it too easy to counter me, basically. I'm sharing all of my bills and people know my favorite favorite setups because I talk about them, so. Hopefully Armands is gonna mix it up a little bit though. Like I already said, I'm super excited about him. I think I can do like 380 speed Armand in stone skin, so. I mean, that, that's assuming like uh, mostly almost max speed clips, but I, I can do it, so it's gonna be way faster than any build I ever had before. 
I mean, it's not gonna, it's not, it's not gonna be that fast for the ultra fast people. But when I already have it in his Thorn skin, even if he just cuts in and doesn't always go first, I think that's gonna be effective. But um, I guess we will find out. Maybe, maybe it's better to not um, not get too excited just yet. Uh, I think we can go kill on the Wukong and then do the A2. Yeah, nice. Yeah, if I didn't have Ankora in the team, I wouldn't have gotten the extra turn at this moment, and that might have actually made a huge difference in this fight. But see, we actually used both Ankora and Staldos, two champions that um, people don't really rate very highly. I don't know how you guys feel about it, but I have seen in comments everybody saying that Ankora isn't that good and Narciss is way better. And lots of people are using Narciss without Angora in Classic Arena offense. Many of the top accounts are doing that. But I think in Live Arena, Angora is actually very useful many times. But, but the good thing about it is though that you don't necessarily have to go with Angora, but you have the option to do it as well. And it's a pretty low priority pick by enemies, so most likely you can get Angora if you want to. Maybe we want to get it in this fight. Is he also gonna pick Wukong like they usually do? Wait, didn't we already fight against this guy? I think we did. Yeah, that's that's pretty tough looking team. And if I go now with Rodos and Angora, he, he he's so gonna go with UDK. But I don't really want to go with UDK myself. And if I go with like Rodos, if I go with Stados and Angora, I think he's gonna pick Lockout. Hmm. I don't know if I can kill this team with Staldos. Nah, okay, let's give Staldos a chance. I'm gonna be disappointed by Staldos, but let's give him a chance. The kind of pick is... Oh, okay, Wukong. Interesting. Wait, isn't this the exact same matchup we just had? Or almost the same? I guess I'm gonna go for the CV ban again. But the Isu, after the Blessing rework, I think it was indirect buff for many things, probably most things to be honest. But on defense scaling nukers, you don't get the defense unless you have 3 star blessing. And none of my defense scaling nukers have 3 star blessing, so they all kind of lost a lot of damage, even though everybody else generally gained damage or utility. I also did end up putting my Staldos in Guelty as well, though it gets a lot better at higher levels, but I'm really liking Cruelty after the buff to it. Okay, this time he's really gonna put the Staldos up to test. He has lots of um, DC and I'm also getting pummeled by his damage and not getting a chance to strike back, so can I make a comeback on this with Staldos? I guess he doesn't, um, he does have the turn meter reduction with Mikage, but he doesn't have a lot of turn meter boost on himself. Maybe if I can revive Staldos at the right time with Ankara with 75% turn meter, maybe I can get the turn with Staldos. But I'm probably gonna ne need at least two turns to actually um, kill anybody else in his team other than Wukong. Oh, and we got them in the block buffs, and I guess I already wasted the... Um... Yeah, I think we must use the Duchess to revive, yeah. Duchess is gonna die soon anyway, and I might use the revive on her. I wish we procced 
polymorph there. Yeah, we really need to get the polymorph proc on Yatsas. Okay, nice. I'd rather have it on Harima though. If we had it on the last Harima AoE, that would have been great. Can I get a turn? Okay, nice. By the way, th this is what I was saying at the start of the video when when I, like, um, in reference to uh, the video Doc made about Armands, that people are never gonna get a turn in the fight. Well, it took me two minutes, so I finally got a turn with Staldos, but I totally have many, many fights on video. I think literally on my last video there's a fight where I didn't get a single turn in the entire match, even on my support, so... I have been used to that for years, so... Welcome to the club. And maybe I can maybe I can do it to somebody else for the first time when I, if I have Armands in Stone Skin. <laughs> maybe or like half do that so that their nukers at least don't get turned. Even if their CV is probably gonna go before my Armands. Okay, so we're 1-1 one, one against the guy. I think there's a good chance that we're going to get him again. Yeah, he, he went with pretty much the same teams on both times. Almost the same. And that Mikage Wukong combination always gets me, though. This is, this is nowhere close to the first time that this happens. I have terrible win ratio if they pick those two together. Also, I can't wait to get more champions with 6-star Polymorph. I only st still have two champions with 6-star Blessing, Rotos and Duchess. And I don't think Narsus is going to be my next champion with 6-star. We will see about that. He's definitely going to be my next champion with 4-star Blessing, but I might go for a 6-star on UDK or Necret or something like that. I kind of can't decide between the two which one I want to get 6-star Polymorph on, but I really need to get it on at least one more support champion. Okay, so yeah, we, we got the dreaded Mikage and Wukong that I just complained about. And they are basically horrible against everybody. They can ally attack my Rotos down, Helicat can't use any of his buffs against them, they can polymorph uh, targets through Necret protection and so on. But I, I guess I'm gonna go with Necret. And what is the rest? Arimataras, again. Okay, he actually went with Angora. And now we at least know that the Wukong is in Nuke build. Also, I'm kind of surprised that he saved the Nuker as the last pick. Does he not have Harima or is he just teasing me? Uh, I'm probably gonna ban the Mi uh, Mikage actually. I could even go with Initra here. But do I want to take the risk if, if he has like Arima Inifikant critical strike on it? Um I could even go with Arbiter. Let's go with Arbiter. I have pretty fast Wukong and Narsas. Both are like 240 plus. And he doesn't really have any turn meter booster in the team. I mean, kind of. I guess Ankara does do it, technically. But basically... Oh. Bomb champion. I don't think he can bomb me. This is kind of weird setup, but... 
Yeah, I think I'm gonna go for the Mikaki, but I guess he's gonna ban my dots as well. If we, if it, no, Arbiter ban, what? I'm assuming that the Astralite is very fast and it's gonna go first, but very likely one of my Nougars will go second or third at least. Mm, also, I don't think that's gonna kill my Dodges, to be honest. He doesn't have attack buff. I mean, my Dodges is in stone skin, but she also does have 160k HP. Yeah, it didn't even break the bolster. That's kind of funny. Okay, we're, we're good. Uh, there's no way he can beat beat me at this point. Rotos is in Vale and is gonna guarantee to get at least two turns, and those two turns should be two, two kills, I think. Well, he does have pretty big shields, but yeah, with, with Helm Smasher Brock, surely it's gonna be a kill. Do I want to hit the Astral? Uh. Let's hit the Astralite. Yeah. Astralite can swap HP, which would be kind of bad if I get her low HP, but there was no way it was gonna tank the Rotos hit. Oh wait, maybe that was a bad bad idea because the Angora is veiled, and now he's gonna get the Astralite revived with cooldowns back. Well, I don't think that's gonna matter. The Wukong can still kill me, that's the threat. The Astralite is not the threat, but the Wukong is. My Narciss is very low HP. So he does have the ally protection, so he can do that massive splash damage. But if he didn't have that ally protection, he could one-shot my entire team with A2 on the Narciss. Uh, can we block revive the Angora? Okay. Wait. Okay, I misclicked there, right? I was pl planning on getting extra turn with Narciss and I was gonna do the A2, but I totally forgot that we don't have Angora in the team, so we didn't get the extra turn. And then Rotos was next, and that's why I did the A1 on Rotos. Wait, was this the second? fight against this guy as well. But yeah, by the way, tell me in comments what do you think about... Um, ah, I forgot his name. Armands? Yeah, what do you think about Armands? Because I see lots of people hyped about it and lots of people very negative about it. And I don't really know where the public uh, opinion stands, to be honest. In in my clan, people haven't really even talked about Armands. I guess everybody's uh, waiting to actually play test him and then make their opinions, but there has been no like complaints or people uh, getting hyped about him. Like people have mentioned him, but kind of in a <laughs> in a very neutral way. People were saying the same thing, that uh, they are surprised that it's a void, it's not a void champion. <laughs> and it's a fusion. Okay, let's actually see what's going on on the Reddit. What is Reddit saying about Armas? This has kind of become a regular segment in my live arena videos that there is always the reddit time when I see what's going on. Ok, 
okay, I can make a faster build. Like the trade is how fast is your fastest champion. I can make a faster build, of course. Not that much faster, but I think we are actually looking it up when we were chatting in Discord a couple days ago. And if I don't care about anything else than speed, and I go for the max speed build on my account with Optimizer, with max clip, so plus 8 speed on every, every piece, I can make a 378 um, Arbiter right now, but my actual fastest build is the 339 Arbiter, so that's what I'm playing with currently. No discussion about Armands. I guess the Armands... Wait, what? Ah, that's funny. I don't even know what, what his kit does. Does he have something against Polymorph? I don't know if Armands is just something that the super endgame players care about. I, I don't know if mo most people even um, are, are aware of the debate about him being super OP. I mean... I don't think anybody disagrees that he's very OP, but everybody is not as scared of him as some others might be. Okay, let's just go with... Um, Narciss and Necret again. I don't like the early lockout pick. I, I mean, it's it's a good choice from his side, but um, I want to pick some neutral pick so because I don't know what he's actually gonna go with yet. Okay, doesn't look like there's anything else interesting on Reddit today. Oh wait, what was the trade about Rock? Yeah, I have no idea what that champion does. I don't think they showed its kit unless they um, uploaded an another video recently or they did some kind of leak on Facebook or something. That that's, by the way, one funny thing. I mean, it's not a big deal to me personally, but I know it gets some people very frustrated. But Raid likes to do, I don't know if it's just miscommunication between their uh, community managers, but very often they leak stuff on Facebook way before they tell it to content creators or publish their videos about it. But often we like basically get leaks from Facebook of the official Larium posts. And I don't even have Facebook, but somebody always uh, finds those Facebook posts. What? I don't even I don't even know this account, but I should know if he has crazy account like this. What? Everybody is plus four. And only Warlord is missing. <laughs> missing six star blessing. Okay, I think we're gonna go with uh, <laughs> UDK and Status or UDK and... I think I have to go with goddamn Status here. I don't think there's other options. I could go with Angora 2 instead of UDK, but I think I have to go with UDK. UDK is not just good against Rotos and Sifi, but it's actually pretty good against George as well because he can't use his hard hitting nuke that ignores stone skin that grants him extra turn on skill on kill. Or I mean he can use it, but it will go to UDK and he's on reaction and there's a good chance that uh, he procs it and even if he doesn't proc it, he can survive it if he doesn't proc the passive. So he, he probably could survive it even if he procs the passive, but definitely not against 4 star. Um, plus 4 empowered charge it with 6 star blessing. Damn, the, the Rata, Taras isn't even empowered at all. But, like, I, I don't think I have ever seen this account unless he changed the name, but damn, that, that's a crazy account. I don't think there really is. <laughs> 
any accounts like that even in mad to be honest like everything is plus four except taras and he probably has two taras so i will be shocked if that that is his only tar only taras you must give two for classic arena offense that's what everybody does even if they have one at plus three and are very tempted to go plus four, but they are not going to do it. Tara 7 kind of has this interesting mechanic that at times empower he, empowering him can even be negative because he's gonna get extra attack and if he has more attack than the enemy, he's gonna do half of the normal damage with the A2. So you want to keep the attack as low as possible. I mean, it's usually not going to be easy, but in some situations it can be. UDK always soaks up those Taras A2s, and people try to specifically build UDKs with as low attack as possible. And it's a popular trick that many of the top accounts do, that they even use unempowered weapons on UDK, because weapon of course give you, gives you attack as the main stat, but they will literally use like plus zero weapon just so that they don't get any attack on UDK against the Taras matchup. Okay, good start, but is Narsus gonna proc reaction or not? That's the question. Okay. Didn't proc reaction? Ah. Oh, wait. Can I take a turn before Chor- Okay, nice. So we did, we did not proc reaction, but my Narsus now with the empowered chest and boots was so tanky that he couldn't do it. Okay, we can basically kill whoever we want. I guess we're gonna go for the George. Oh, I was getting scared that am I not gonna one shot him because the first hit didn't do that much. But I guess he had, um, yeah, he had Ward of the Fallen, and it's of course six star blessing, so that's gonna mitigate a lot of damage. Damn, <laughs> we're getting super intense fights on the morning. Like, what kind of crazy account is this? I don't know about his gear, but I'm not sure if there's um, any account in MAD that has higher empowerments than this one does. I mean, depending on the champions, but George, it... I mean, okay, Sifi and Rotos are pretty old champions, so many people have them at plus four. But plus four charge it is pretty still uh, uncommon to have. And that might be one of the best, if not even the best, plus four champion to get in this game. By the way, I got a good tip from one of the viewers. I want to say it was Fox, but it could have been somebody else. But maybe last week I was talking about my Narsus build. And I was planning to reroll the gloves to crit damage ascension. And basically they were saying, maybe it was a couple people, but a couple people were saying that am I then going to get more damage with crit damage in comparison to HP and like I assumed that it was going to be way more damage but when I actually looked it up with the calculator it was more damage but it was like 700 more damage with A2 so I just kept the HP percentage on the gloves and now he's at least way tankier and if I had the crit damage on gloves and not HP I probably would have lost the last fight. Of course, having 6 star bone armor would be very good as well, but working with what I have. There's, there's a lot of room to glue these pieces as well, because I wasn't really focusing, I wasn't really using any HP scaling nukers before, to be honest. Little bit of Arix, but not even that much of him, but this gear was never my priority with the uh, Clips and it is not super heavily clipped and 
I can still get a good amount of uh, extra damage. Even speed, even, even speed I can. I'm definitely gonna use six star glyphs on these pieces. By the way, so far it's going pretty well. I, w I was kind of getting depressed that I'm, am I gonna be hard stuck at the 4.2k rating forever? And I was for a couple of days, but I think we finally figured it out. All it took was to stop um, early picking Rotos, not being too like hungry to use my best nuker, and play a bit more chill, use Taltos and mix it up with those support picks. I mean, I was using Wukong a lot before as well, but I've been using it even more lately. Often against those teams that go with Arima or UDK or both of them. But in the last couple of days I've been using it even against other teams. Okay, it must be Nook Wukong with Phantom Touch and because he picked UDK. Probably gonna be Rotos as well. But to be honest, I feel like Narciss has pretty good matchup against him. Because if he gets too many buffs, we can easily block revive it. And Wukong is so squeezy that we might even do it with one hit, even through the UDK passive. What? Second time in this video somebody picks Angkor after I pick Narsus. I, I feel like that has never happened before and it's kind of... It's kind of a weird choice. I don't think it's that big counter pick if they pick it just so that I can't get it. And I don't feel like he... I'm sure he could have picked something better than Angkor in this matchup. He has super weird team as well. And the last champion has to be Nuger, probably Rotos. And yeah, if I early picked Rotos in this fight, and then he picked the Yumeko, I would have been totally screwed. So, even though Rotos is my best Nuger, and I hope to get him in every fight, but I definitely learned my lesson that I need to chill out on him and not try to force him too hard. It kind of fe felt often that uh, it's my best choice, it's it's my best chance at winning, even if I have to force it against Arima, UDK and Lockout. But um, I think with Narcissus I have more options. I still wish I had a couple more good nukers, but just the mere fact that I actually have two good nukers now, in instead of one, it opens a lot of doors and gives me a lot more options. Even using Arbiter today, uh, mixing it up a lot from my typical stuff. So, I mean, Arbiter also I've been using in the last week a good amount. Okay, what do I even... I guess I'll still go for it there too. Yeah, let's do it. I mean, it's only gonna kill the Wukong. By the way, if you're watching this video for like an hour, and you're not subscribed to my channel, then consider subscribing to my channel. <laughs> A little bit of shilling, but I never used to do it at all. And when I did it a couple of times, I got so many subscribers that I need to I need to remind myself to do it every once in a while. I have mentioned it before, but I really want to get 8k subs and get test server access. And if I do get 8k subs, I promise to make a lot of 
videos on this server and and do proper rigorous arena testing there so do it and you will get good content assuming that you care about pvp okay kind of looking rough but i guess the um, the um, stone skin is over as well That's level 55 Ankara. Well, I, I think we should be good. The Wukong just used the A2. As long as he doesn't <laughs> doesn't revive the Wukong with Ankara or reset its cooldowns with the A1. Ah. We have like multiple turns of safety, but I guess not. I I guess I'm gonna die like right after that. I said it. Okay, okay, nice. We survived it. I think we should get get like one turn on the Nougars now, hopefully. Wait, what? He did he just get it back from the Ankara A1? I think he did. I I don't think Wukong should have had the A2 just yet. But th there you go. I didn't win this fight, but now you saw another fight where Ankara was actually very useful even without the partner, even though I was very skeptical in Lopi that why did he go with Ankara, and I'm pretty sure he mostly went with Ankara, so I couldn't have her, but I guess it worked out for him. The, the Wukong can hit insanely hard. I, I think people often underestimate him because so many, well, every top account has Harima, Probably an empowered one, and they use it in basically every fight. That's why you don't really get to see his uh, full force at display too often. But if they don't have Harima, then Wukong can do like 700k AoEs because then um, I've explained this. Wait, should I actually pick Wukong just so that he can pick it? Let's go with Wukong. Oh, okay, never mind. I can only pick one champion. Um. I've explained this before, but it's kind of, you could call it a bug or oversight in Parium coding, but it works the same way with um, other similar effects as well, like Randa A2. But um, like first you do single target hit, and if it kills a target, then you do AOE damage based on the surplus damage. So if you hit somebody that is very low HP, then you're gonna get a bigger AOE nook. Uh, wait, let me think about this. I feel like my last team was good, but I still lost it. Maybe I'll go with Xena this time. Wait, okay, let's go with Ankara. Let's go with Ankara. But not only does the AOE damage scale from the surplus, but all of the damage increasing effects are applied once for the original hit, and then the second time for the second hit. So if you hit somebody very low, and you can easily hit like 180k on the first hit, even, even more than that. I mean, if you have insane gear and enemy has low HP and defense, you could hit like 300k with the first hit. But then the second hit can basically do double, double the damage of the original hit. So you can get upwards of like 700k hits with the Wukong A2. Not on the first hit, but the AOE splash, splash damage after that. Of course, that's not very, that's not gonna happen very often in practice. But I have, I have gotten over 600k Wukong AOE nukes in Live Arena as well. So, though mine is in the support build right now. Uh, should we go with Rados this time? No, that sounds like a terrible idea. Yeah, I don't really have other options. I guess Xena and Xena Staldus and 
windows are all pretty much the same in this matchup. But we did get the Angora this time, so we have double reviver. I guess we technically had it last time as well, but my Angora is way tankier than my Arbiter was. And Angora is also in 6p stone skin, like this is. Ah, oh, George, that, that's bad. And, well, he can. He, George can just kill it through the thorn skin, unless I proc reaction. Did I go with Narciss buff? Maybe I can out tank it. But if he didn't have the charge, then that would give me plenty of time to get some revives off after his AoE nukes. But George might just kill my Narciss on the first turn. If he procs the passive and we don't proc reaction, then, then Angora will definitely die. Okay, I went first. Do I even want to... I guess I have to take the... Leorius low HP, but... But he's gonna hit harder now. Okay, we didn't even proc it. Damn, I can almost break through the... Wukong stone skin, but... I can't do it. Let's go with the A2 and save the A3 for later. If I had the attack buff, maybe I could have done it. Okay, what is he gonna do? Now we don't have reaction either, so basically the... Okay, he definitely didn't proc the passive there. Uh, I think we're gonna go kill on the Wukong so that he doesn't get a turn. Is Ankara gonna be the difference that he won the last fight with Ankara and now I win this fight because because I have her. Well, okay, let's not. I always get uh, get too uh, excited when I'm about to win, but the Wukong can literally still one shot my team. Well, okay, Ankara is still in Stone Skin, but he can one shot everybody else now if he gets it. To, okay, damn. I didn't want my Ankara to go first, but at least we're gonna get the uh, shield up. Maybe he's gonna hit a, lit a little bit less hard with the AoE. Okay. What? What What happened now? Did he not crit? He went for A2, but it did no damage. Well, in either case, he just wasted the A2, so we should be safe. I was super tired when I started making the video, but now that I have been talking a little bit, I'm getting less and less tired. Maybe I can master my strength and stay awake until evening, and then I can have proper um, sleep schedule again, potentially, if I if I don't intentionally sabotage it. Okay, yeah. I think it, um, yeah, if we revive Narciss, he's gonna be at full turn meter. And also we're just gonna block revive anyway, so it's a no-brainer. Okay, now, now we officially want it. Yeah. Pretty tough team, he's making the most out of that Wukong, but like I mentioned before, if I just had Harima, then he would have like literal 0% chance to win with that team. So that only works against those people without Harima, and it's kind of risky to go with a team like that, unless you specifically know that the enemy doesn't have Harima. Which is a big part of the reason why I don't, um, I'm not running around with the Nuke Wukong and why I'm not early picking uh, Rotos in every fight. If it, if the Harima wasn't so big issue, I, I would do it, believe me. <laughs> Without UDK and Harima, Rotos is 
by far my best chance to win every fight, but it's just so easy to counter it and everybody has the counters, so... Somebody in my clan was saying in my last video that it looked like I was balding and my hair wasn't um, wasn't properly groomed. And my reply was like, I didn't really expect uh, that. Like, um, like my the average uh, people watching my videos are in their late thirties to fifties, so very rare, very small amount of people are like young and. I wasn't expecting anybody to really care about uh, the way I look and often I go shower before the videos but I don't really like uh, comb my hair or anything like that I just I just do it the natural way so in case in case you saw what my clanmates saw in that video but no in fact I'm not actually balding just yet Okay, it's third fight against the same guy. He knows all my tricks. I know his tricks, I think. But what do I want to do now? Wait, I should definitely pick the Narsus at least. Yeah, we're still gonna go with the same, the same three first picks every fight. But this time he got Ankara, and based on the last fight, then I'm gonna lose this fight. I guess I'm gonna go with something else than Arbiter this time. The issue is that I must ban Yumeko, and that means I can't go with Helicat. My Mountain King isn't geared. What can I even do? Mikage isn't gonna be that great, because he has the cleanse and the passive from Ankara, but I can also do ally attack and reduce the turn meter of his team. Maybe I should do... Wait, wait. I don't know if I can pull this off, but it would be kind of funny. Should I go with Mika and Init? <laughs> that might actually kind of work. He has to pick a nuker now. He's not gonna have a fast support. I can totally do this. That's at least what I tell to myself, but I think I can do this. I mean, he can't like pick a Sifi or something like that, like that at this point. And I'm gonna ban the Yumeko, of course. He, he, he might uh, he might have a fast uh, I don't know he might have like ultra fast charge it or something but his charge it is definitely not gonna be faster than my Mikage even though my Mikage isn't that fast I think it's the same actually I think my Mikage was couple beat faster than Arbiter but surely we can block revive the Wukong before it gets a turn assuming that um, assuming that Narsus doesn't kill it before that but I think we can we can get the block revive. Okay, yeah. See, by the way, everybody was roasting and complaining about my um, situational Astia in my tier list, but I totally nailed it. You remember I literally said in the video, the champions on the situational Astia, you never pick them except on very rare occasions. And in those occasions, in the right matchup, you automatically win the fight, and it's a must ban for the enemy. And that's exactly how it played out. I was right, and that's it. <laughs> my, my tier list was correct, and you're not gonna change my mind about that. There wasn't that big backlash, but many people were kind of uh, mad about the situation as there. But I, I think the situation last year actually made a lot of sense, so... Uh, I guess we're still gonna open with the ally attack, yeah. But the, I think the most useful part about Mikake in this fight, like, we can block revive the Wukong now with the first ally attack. But we can still decrease their turn meter every time. Mikake takes turn, and that can be incredibly powerful as well.
Uh, yeah, I guess we're just gonna let Leorios do max damage and kill them. Wait, how many life harvests does he have? One small one. Okay, let's just... Um, yeah, let's just play it safe and protect Dutchess. But yeah, I, I think I won this fight. No way he can make a comeback at this point. Surely not, right? And see, now we get the dirty Mega passive. That, that happens to me all the time, and it's so frustrating. Um, okay, I guess the buff strip didn't do much, but... We got some weekend on them, I guess. I don't think that makes any difference, but... Surely we won this fight. There's no way he can... Wait. I almost tried to kill the... Leorius with Dutch's A1, but that probably wouldn't be a smart thing to do. Because Ankora is just gonna revive it with cooldowns back up, so let's not do that just yet. Ah, I don't have Ankora in my team, so I might actually get feared. Okay, please don't get feared. If I don't get feared, Wukong is gonna get Bok revived. Come on. Ah, god damn it. Okay, do I have enough damage to. To kill the Leorios with the A2. I'm only doing this for damage because he does have the uh, the um, the cleanse. Damn, Wukong has immunity buff up, so we can't actually sleep it. Does he not have anybody with Polymorph? Okay, UDK. He's in it. By the way. Today has been a very diverse uh, video. I've used like pretty much every single champion I have. Not that it's that many, but... Um... Oh, come on. Dude, I was so close. Come on. God damn Wukong. I need that Harima so bad. Okay, and... Uh, no, no. He just did the A1 and I think Wukong got the A2 back already. No. No, come on. Does he have it? Maybe it was on the 8 tree. Okay, it was on 8 tree. Okay, good. Ah, that, that's actually bad. I wish we didn't kill it because we could have gotten a block revive, but now it's gonna get back up. Uh, I guess seizing the Ankara is still good because um, it is better when Narsus is on the team. We can't block revive, but I guess we can still kill it. Yeah, so now she's, she still loses basically a turn, but she gains 50% turn meter. But she doesn't just completely ignore the CC like she would if Narsus was on the same team. Damn, this fight is getting super close. I don't know if I'm actually gonna win this or not. We, we can't even kill the... Angoros. Oh, okay. That actually... That timing was kind of good. I guess we're gonna go for Wukong kill again. Play a little bit time. I was gonna go for Ally attack on the Angora, but... Of course, we're, we're gonna switch it to the... Wukong. That, that definitely wasn't... Um, I didn't realize that was gonna happen, but that was actually a super good thing that it happened. Ah, one more turn. We can't get the whale up, and I think Leoros is gonna move before our... Okay, good. I guess our Narsus was a lot faster than his Leoros. He is like 240 speed. Okay, so close, but Wukong can still finish this with 1A2. Come on. Come on. So close. Come on. Oh, 
Well, uh, probably my Darkness is gonna make it, uh, even if he kills everybody else, I should be fine. He can't reset the cooldown anymore, so... Oh, actually, that, that was super close. Wait. I, I have 5 turn duration of the boss because of the... Uh, because of the Mikake A2. Yeah, I don't think he can kill that. With, oh, this Wukong hit so hard. I wasn't expecting that much damage from Wukong A1. It's a, it's very uh, lackluster multiplier. He must have very insane Wukong build. Come on. Okay, okay. Surely, surely we made it. No, again we got the goddamn counter attack. Dude, every time I'm, I'm about to win, and if I do... If I go for A2 now, I might kill the UDK, but if I get polymorphed, I lose. I guess I have to take the chance. I'm not gonna take the chance. Ugh. Uh, I think I lost the fight. Yeah, every time I, I was about to win the fight, but then... Narsus kills that goddamn Wukong with the counter attack, and if I didn't get counter attack proc, I would won the fight twice, but both times I procked it so I couldn't block revive the Wukong and or kill it and god damn it. Ah that 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 was so close, I mean good fight, but um we, we should have won that fight. We got we got unlucky. Anyway, it's it's been a good run and we had very good fights against the Wukong guy, but I wanted to I wanted to win that fight. By the way, I wonder how hard the Arman's fusion is gonna be. It's gonna be slightly different than the typical ones. They already, I think, publicly mentioned it, but I think they said it's gonna be one of those where you uh, farm the fragments for epics and then you fuse the epics to him. And Considering how hard the fusion events are just in general, and how strong Armands is, I'm pretty sure it's gonna be incredibly hard fusion, so be prepared to that, but it's definitely gonna be worth it for this champion. The good thing about Armands is that I think he's pretty much usable everywhere, like, of course, main, main avenue where you're gonna use him is in PvP, but considering how hard, for instance, Cursed City is, he's gonna be very good there, but I guess the biggest issue with Cursed City is that not, not even, um, it's not about the gear or what champions you have, but it's the fact that you need to kill those floors with factions and like kill this floor with only Skinwalkers, HP scaling, epic champions or epic and rare champions and then you basically don't have a, a single champion that you can even use there. That's the issue. We had good discussion with Nukex about it. I think I was originally saying that maybe they will do like uh, the Primal Void champions and maybe those could be used in any factions and then Nukex has had his um, own version of it that he uh, came up with when I uh, suggested the primal one was that we could get a new faction that is some kind of mercenary faction that can play with any um, any faction restricted floor on Cursed City. I really really hope we get content like that. 
I have actually been playing Watcher of Realms for maybe almost three months at this point. And in that game, there is actually a faction like that. Though it's not very common knowledge, because that faction only has one champion. And it's an extremely, extremely rare champion. You only have a 0.08% chance to pull him. Which is even lower than, than getting a good uh, specific champion in raid. But uh, yeah, you can basically use that one in any faction wars in that game. No, regardless of the faction. And that, that, this is kind of like a flex. I kind of, um, I guess that's probably the reason why that came to my head. But I did pull that champion on the weekend. So lucky me. Let's see if I can find a picture about it. Okay, nice. I am love for the win. Oh, are we fighting another bot account? Or is this um actual pl player? I hope he doesn't go with double lockout, but I'm pretty sure he's gonna go with double lockout. If he does, then Roto spared with Angora and Narciss might be the best shot, but it's gonna be hard. Okay, here is the champion. So, this is like two different characters, but it's one champion. It's like the Dragon Rider Ajax, but the one that is actually doing all of the damage is the Dragon. But yeah, you, you can use him in any faction in the game. Ah, he went with Rotos. God damn it. Do I really... I, I have zero percent chance to win against this. I have to go with like... Um, who do I even go with? Should I go with Helica just to fight him? Oh fuck. Windows is maybe my best chance, but he's not gonna survive. There's no way I could ever kill the team with either Staldus or um, Xena or any other ones. And yeah, he's of course gonna ban Narsus. Yeah. Well, I mean... Technically, Quintus could kill this team, but there's no way he's gonna survive. He's probably gonna gonna die to the first Taras AoE and even true Necret protection and so on. But anyway, that's a cool idea, having a mercenary faction. They could totally do it in raid, and I hope they do it. We really need to have one for the Cursed City. Not really for faction wars anymore, because that's kind of old content. But Curse City is just so insanely hard that we really need to get something like that. Okay, he didn't... I guess he kind of uh, wanted to wait out the uh, reaction. I'm pretty sure my Quintus is not even in any reaction or maybe one piece, but... Um, works for me, I guess. And he doesn't have UDK, so my Windows can totally one-shot the Taras, though. Unless he's... Unless I removed his gear and he's naked and I forgot about it. But I'm pretty sure he's not. Yeah. But, as you saw, we got our attack reduced and he has insanely tanky team, so... It's not gonna be that easy. Who do I even go for here? I have to kill the... Let's kill the Rotos. I want to kill the Mariska, but I need to get rid of the Rotos. But yeah, I think... Um, I'm just gonna lose because of the... Attack reduction on Taras Basu. Okay, I, I guess it's fine. We, we got another good opportunity to talk about how broken Daras is and he should be nerfed. Like, okay, let's ignore the damage for a second. And of course, 
Taros is the best damage champion in the game. But... Ah, uh, wait. So, he has one passive that has 50% damage mitigation. He's an Uger, an HP scaling Uger, first of all. But he has one passive that reduces all damage by 50%. And then another passive that reduces everybody's attack by 10% every time they hit him so you can't one shot him and if you hit him more than once you lose the fight because you can't do any damage anymore at, at least make some at least the attack reduction should reset when taras dies or something like that but that's so so goddamn stupid design i just it's so frustrating <sighs> i said this before but whoever designed Aras at Parium. That guy needs to get sentenced to play live arena without Taras for the rest of his life, and then he will then he will know the like the misdeeds that he has done to this game. But like, there's just no way you can come up with that stuff and not do it on purpose. Like they were just screwing up with the game on purpose for like you know. You know why, I'm not even gonna say it, but you know why they, they did it, so... No, there's no way that the people that designed Taras thought that it was even remotely balanced. It's not even close, but yeah. We should have won that fight, Taras is OP and... That's all I'm gonna say about it. Fuck Taras. Drock can, Drock can complain about his uh, polymorph and other causes, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna stick to complaining about Taras. D don't worry about that. I guess he agrees with Taras. To be fair, he does agree with it, but he, he thinks that polymorph is a big part of the reason why Taras is OP. Uh, I see the point, but Taras is OP just uh, in a vacuum. And I disagree about the polymorph, but it is what it is. We, we have been debating so much about the polymorph topic because uh, Brock disagrees. That uh, I mean, we haven't really had any like drama or anything like that, but it constantly comes up, so I'm getting a little bit tired of it. Okay, so we're against Biohack, and what's up with the live harvest? Wukong? Is that not... I assume that's gonna be a Nook build. M maybe he's picking it for Narsus or something like that. I don't even know if he has Harima. Pre pretty sure he has Harima, but... Uh, I guess we're gonna go with the usual stuff. Anyway, I was getting a bit heated about the goddamn Taras, but I don't think Biohack has Taras, so I can calm down on this fight, even if I'm probably gonna lose, but he doesn't have Taras, so it's okay. Okay, uh, I think I'm gonna go with Rotos and Ankara, right? I think that makes sense, yeah. And who's gonna be his last champion? I guess some kind of turn meter manipulation or... Well, okay, yeah. But yeah. He does have turn meter manipulation as well, but... I was literally gonna say lockout, but he already peaked it. Ah, and th yeah. Actually, it's gonna be pretty rough because... He's probably gonna ban my Narcissus, I assume. I mean, that makes sense. We can totally kill... A Arbiter just with ally attack, but it might still take quite some. He didn't ban Narsus. Okay, if we proc reaction with Narsus, we can win the fight on the first turn. Assuming that he doesn't go before Narsus with Wukong and Polymorph it, but. I think if Narsus survives the George's Nook, we might actually have a chance at winning. Come on, let's get the win. 
I definitely lost the last time I won against Biohack. I don't know if I ever won against Biohack, but I think we fought maybe two times. So. Okay, nice, nice. Pretty sure he procs the passive there, but my my Ankara is just uh, too chat. But yeah, Rotos is gonna do nothing without the ally attack. Okay, what are we even gonna do here? I'd rather have the Narsus die than get polymorphed at in this um, situation. I guess we're I guess we still lost. I don't I don't see how we can make a comeback here. Grotos can't do anything for many turns. I don't know if I should protect. Hmm. I think we need to go for the charge to kill. But that, that means that we're not gonna get protection on Narsus. I was considering doing A2 on Arbiter and then protecting Narsus, but they just kill the charge. It. Yeah, it, it's looking pretty bad though. Don't give me extra turn, okay, good. Well, that's not enough to save me, but... Okay, if, damn. We got the ally attack back on Necret, but he's stunned, so... That's a shame. Okay, nice. Okay, yeah, Wukong is still gonna go before Ankara, so... Maybe if I get like critical strike now with Rotos, I don't know. Nah, I think Rotos is probably still gonna A1 me down, but I don't have decrease attack. If I broke Helm Smasher and I, I don't crit, I can definitely one shot the UDK, but that's assuming that I do it, so. Uh, let's go ally attack on the Arbiter. I don't think that makes sense. Does he have Polymorph on UDK? He does. I don't want to ally attack the UDK. Oh, Arbiter actually did die. A1. Ah! I didn't think he had the cooldowns back yet. Okay. Well, we lost. It is what it is. If my Rotos was a little bit faster, we might have had a tiny chance to win, but not really because he was gonna get the double turn. Would have been very interesting though. Uh, I, I guess the charge it can. Oh, we have a massive loss streak at the end. We, we had such a good start on the video. But with Armands, if I have him in Stone Skin, charge it can, of course, snoop through it. But I think I can put one piece of reaction on him, but it wouldn't even work against that team. Anyway, it, it was a great start, but we kind of screwed it up in the end. They are pretty hard matchups, though. In my defense. But yeah, imagine that I um, I got a champion on Watcher of Realms, which is 0 point, not 0 0.8, 0 0.08 percent chance to pull, and I got it, and I actually have a second one, not the same champion, but another champion that is as rare as him, and it's even better than him. It's um, a champion called Cyrus. Let's say it's something like, um, well, I don't think you can really even, it's like Taras of Watcher of Realms, basically. It's a tank, but it does more damage than every nuker in the game, except a couple, couple of the best nukers. 
but it's not even an ogre, it's a tank, so... I have two of those super rare and super good champions in that game. Only played the game for three months, and in raid, this is where we're at. I, I wish I I got that RNG in raid and not Watcher of Realms, to be honest. I don't even need two, just give me one, just give me Sifi. That, that would be a lot of fun. And it's a lot higher chance to get Sifi than get those two champions. Or you get either one of them. Okay, is it gonna be a bot or is it gonna be a player? I had several fights with those bots lately, so I'm kind of suspecting every player to be a bot, and when I think they are a bot, they aren't, and when I don't realize it, people tell, tell me after the video that I was actually fighting a bot. But I know that the account with 29 number on it, that is definitely a bot, but I don't know about this one. Okay, I, I don't think it's both based on those two peaks, I guess. Usually today, every time they go with Harima or UDK, they always go with Wukong so that I can't pick it. But this time we have the opportunity and it's very good against the Necret as well, so let's go with the Wukong. Maybe we're gonna go with... Um, Helicat in this fight. I don't, I don't want to pick a second nuker yet. Either I need to go with Helicat or Ankara, but let's go with Ankara. Pretty sure he's gonna ban my Narses and Force me to play with whichever B tier nuker I'm gonna pick now, but oh, he even he even went with Rotos. Um, in that case, we have both Duchess and Norses, so Mitrala um, X might not be that big issue. Maybe we just go with Staldos and ban the Sifi. Uh, let me think about it. Yeah, yeah, let's ban the Sifir. I could ban the Necret too, but it's not gonna be a super fast fight. It's gonna be a very tanky team, but without any reviver, if we just can survive, then surely we can kill this one even, even with Staltos. I think we did get a couple of Staltos wins today, so yay for him, I guess. I'm very reluctantly using Staldos. I wish I didn't have to use him, but I don't have better options and I'm kind of forced to play with him, so it is what it is. Definitely, definitely not picking Staldos because I love him, but because I don't have Harima or Ragas and so on. And I can't wait for the day that I can ungear my status again and put the items on a better champion, hopefully. Yeah, his team is so tanky, even without the reviver, but I'm kind of fearing that it's gonna last so long that Rotos is gonna start block reviving my team. Okay, never mind. I didn't expect the Mitrala to, to be that squeezy. I guess with all of these buffs, even my Staldos is a bit, little bit tanky at this point. 
he has that massive mega shield and three turn defense buff and so on. By the way, the funny part is like I'm talking about my luck in Watch of Realms, but for the last couple of weeks I have been kind of contem contemplating if I'm gonna quit the game because I'm playing Raid, Dragonair and Watch of Realms and I, I also play other games on the side at some point. I was actually planning to play Rust which I bought years ago because some of my friends played it. By years ago, I mean like maybe like seven years ago, but I never really played the game and I have been watching some Rust videos on YouTube. Maybe I'm gonna play Rust by myself or I mean I'm gonna do it, but I'm playing so many games. I'm also doing videos and other stuff, so and we're gonna have the new game AFK Journey at the end of this year. This is not a sponsored ad by the way even though I did those for them, but I'm going to play that game and yeah, I'm still considering dropping Watch of Realms for that. And of course, when I'm planning to quit the game, I'm getting trolled by the RNG Jesus that he's dropping all of the most rare and uh, strong champions at my base and trying to make it really hard for me to quit. but. We will see about that. Watcher of Realms is relatively um, low maintenance, at least compared to Raid. But still, like, uh, if I play like 15 games at the same time, that's not gonna work. So. Okay, this is getting really scary. I'm pretty sure that Protoss is about to block revive if he's not already doing it and even though we have two revivers but that might not that might not work against him and he's so tanky that we definitely we definitely can't one shot the rotos with saldos i think we i think we lost the fight to be honest i i think it's over i hope he doesn't have the hmm. We probably should go for the A1 to try to get Stalto's cooldowns back, but no luck. Wait, wait, can I get a polymorph? Please, please no wicked, please no wicked. Ah. Ah, okay, surely now he has so much HP that um, he block revives. What? Uh, well, wait. Actually, that was really good. Rotos killing our status. Ah, he still got in. God damn it. Even died to the wicked. Damn it, so close. But I kind of knew that was coming, but. Ah, god damn it. Painful. But yeah, that that is what you get when you're. Playing with, with the goddamn Staldos. I wish I had some real nukers, but I don't. So. Maybe I should have went with Quindus in that fight since um, he didn't have... Um, well, I'm still kind of afraid that he will just... He would have just killed the Quindus through the Necret protection with... One Rotos A3. Probably that wouldn't have worked out. Depends on his Rotos damage, but I would have had much easier time killing them with Quindus, but he might have died way earlier. Uh, 
Uh, he's opening with the Mikage. Should I go with Rotos and... Yeah, let, let's try this. Let, let's go with both Rotos and Duchess. The main reason why I really went... Went for the... I mean, Wukong. Went for the Wukong was that he has accuracy and polymorph. And they are going to be the first two champions in my team order. So I, I have a good chance to get protected from the stun and so on. But it was pretty um, risky to pick it early on, not knowing what he takes. But actually, I think this played out perfectly. He might go. He he might have been planning to go with Rotos and Narcissus, but we're gonna snack both of them out of him. And he still needs to pick two Nukers. He could pick Harima, but he can't pick UDK, and he can't pick, and he he can't pick Lockout. I'm getting overexcited. He can pick Lockout, and we also have the, the Wukong, so we could potentially even polymorph the Harima, so this is kind of looking good for us. For once we have a matchup that seems almost uh, favoring to us, or at least we're not... At least we're not getting hard countered by the enemy team, but I said that too early. The, the Ronda pick is pretty tough, actually. Let me think about this. I was not planning to ban the Mikage, but should I do it? I think we're gonna ban the Mikage after all. Even though my original idea was not to do it, but... We need to do it this way, because Elika does have the stone skin, meaning that Ronda can't uh, block his... Uh, cooldowns or one-shot him and that's basically our one way to potentially survive this team otherwise he's just gonna one-shot whichever nuker he wants and if I would have gone with two nukers instead of three he wouldn't have banned my duchess he would have banned the other nuker and Ronda would have been guaranteed to go before me because of Sifi and Ronda would have been easily able to one-shot either Rotos or Narses, so I had to go for this. Okay, now does Ronda have reaction? That is the question. And do we get feared? Come on. Okay. Every time. I feel like every time we had a situation like this today, it happened multiple times. I think th that was like the second time with fear, but a couple similar things already happened. Every time we needed to win the coin toss, we lost it, so... Uh. Yeah, no, no way we can take it at this point. Right? No way. Let's polymorph the CP just to... Make it lose some HP. Maybe we can A3 the Ankora and then A2 the Sifi after it lost all of the buffs and HP. Ah, okay, and we got stunned. Yeah. Imagine he has two different passives that reduce damage that he takes, or re reduces enemy attack and takes 50% less damage. Then he fears everybody at the start of the fight before anybody takes a turn. Just that skill even require accuracy. I'm pretty sure that skill doesn't even me double check it. I don't think the fear even requires accuracy. And then he also has the card um, stun with the A2 that has no cooldown and is the highest uh, highest scaling like HP nook in the fucking game, so... <sighs> yeah. The fear can't even be resisted. That's such BS. All of those things just by themselves is OP, but he has like 15 different utterly broken OP things that single one of those things shouldn't exist in the game, but they do all on one champion, which makes no sense at all. Anyway, I mean, we lost the fight. 
I think that's that should be pretty obvious. We 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 lost it probably probably before the stun, but we had a chance to win it, but we we got stunned by Taras. So. Damn, we were doing so well, but now we're just getting farmed very hard in the end. Anyway, there's no way that uh, like pe people are afraid of Armands, but there's no way that he's even like one tenth as OP as Taras is, not even on his best day. So I don't think it's gonna ruin the game, no matter how strong and frustrating it is, because there's no way it's gonna compare to Taras. So case closed. <laughs> Okay, come on, let's get two more wins at least to close the day and get uh, get good vibes going on because I'm I'm getting super frustrated frustrated at this point. When I started making the video, I was super tired and sleepy, but now I'm just very angry after fighting all these Taras and Harima teams in in the end. Yeah, I mean, there's no way you can argue against the fact that uh, raid PvP would be so much better if Taras and Maritska were just deleted from the game. They should have never been released and Arena would be so much better. And, and the thing is that uh, even though they are, of course, the best champions in the game and OP, but they are much more dominant in the classic arena than they are in live arena because of the format. And they're already so OP and frustrating here, but they are much more so in classic arena, which used to be the main part of the game that I was focusing on, but I basically had to abandon it or I can't do anything there anymore because of goddamn Ukraine duo. Wait, did we fight against this guy before, or is just another player first picking Mikage? Mikage, Mikage is, uh, I would say, definitely one of the best champions in live arena, but it's a very weird champion to first pick. If I had a fast Sifi, and I pick it after he picked Mikage, then he would be at a massive disadvantage. You have to go with the Sifi first. Maybe he doesn't have Sifi. Yeah, and if we're gonna ban something else than Mikage in this fight, we could totally go with Ankara and have at least Ankara abilities or Dutch's immunity. Okay, what if I go with Wukong and Ankara and then... Nah, nah, let's just go with Nekrat and Ankara. It's safer, yeah. Maybe I'll go with Quintus as my last pick this time in, instead of Stalos. Should I do it? The thing is that Quintus is even squishier than Stalos, but... I don't think we have enough damage without... Well, 
unless we ban the Python that I do it. Yeah, yeah, let's do this. Let's just ban the Python. Yeah, th this is what I get. I'm fighting against like um, Arras, Rotos and Harima and my Nuger is a goddamn Staldos who doesn't even have 3 star blessing so doesn't even get the defense. But there's no way I could run Xena or Quintus against this. They could easily one shot it even through Necret protection. I mean, Saldos isn't that much faster, but he does have the double hit on A1 and A2, and he's a little bit tankier than the other options. Damn, Justice is already gone. Okay, well, I do have the massive fat shield on Staldos. That's not gonna last me very long, but if he doesn't have any heals, it might be good enough. Yeah, it should be good enough. He doesn't have, like, Necret Protection or massive bolster or something. I can kill the Rotos fast before he gets going. Unless like, can she do some CC now after the buff strip? I, I think I should be good, right? Oh, no. Ah, oh, come on. Okay, yeah, we should be good. Right? That is still kind of low, yeah. Arima can totally kill this, yeah. Okay, good. Now we're safe. Now I can take a sip and deep breath and calm down a little bit. I'm, I'm gonna have like... Um, I'm gonna die of like heart attack or something. Fighting against these Taras teams. Okay, finally a win. I feel like we had a trillion fight loss streak, but we broke it. Wait, what? Yeah, five fight loss streak. God damn it. We were doing so good, so good, and then we just got totally destroyed. Yeah, that sucks. I think we're still uh, like a little bit on positive and Maybe if we get one more win, we're, we had so good start that it's still gonna be positive, but getting that massive 5-5 five, five loss streak is definitely bringing the mood down, not even a little bit, but by a large amount. So. I haven't been, even though I do play Live Arena probably more than most people, but I used to play it every day, and now I play it like... What? What? We got a 3.3k enemy. What? How is that possible? What? I don't think this has ever happened to me before. But, but I was saying that now I play it like twice a week. And I have said it many times that, okay, this week I'm gonna make many live arena videos. And then I do like one or two. 
Well, it, I guess it's pointless to make any promises, but let's see if I can make more live arena videos this week. Yeah, th th this is kind of funny. Uh, could I put some handicaps on myself? Not really. He probably still has better champions than me, so do I really want to lose to level 73? I don't think so. I I've had enough losses today after the five fight loss streak, so I am not going to embarrass myself because I'm sure he can easily beat me if I don't go with my best champions, which are Staldus and the rest, so they aren't even that good. Okay, he's going with bombs. I did pick the um, Duchess with 4 piece Thorn skin, though she is incredibly tanky, but... I guess I can go with Angkor this time. It is kind of funny that, that I even have to think about this so hard, but I don't want to lose, so... Probably gonna go with Triple Nuker actually. Well, I mean, my Narthus is definitely gonna survive it because he's gonna have at least one bolster set. Oh, he went with quadruple nukers. That's kind of funny. Well, it, it's okay. So that means that he only has one B speed booster, or basically no, if we ban it. I don't know if, if I want to ban the Wukong or the RP. Let's just ban the Wukong, but he's not gonna move with all of those champions before my helicast even without me having speed aura surely not right that's what i like to think but we will see they will have the speed aura and turn meter boost but i think my helicast is like 280 speed and if it just goes before like one of the nukers i should be fine i mean we're talking talking about level 73 so how good gear can he even have in the first place. Yeah, I'm not gonna lie, it would be kind of funny if I lost this though. Yeah, he's going before me. Okay, well, at least... At least Taldus has enough damage to... Kill a 53k Arbiter and... 36k Knishak and Gaius. At least he's good for something. Might not have enough damage to kill... The teams that I usually meet, but was good enough against the 50k HP Arbiter, so nice. Did anything? pop up on reddit after we do, took a look at it earlier. Damn, he went for the first big dodges. No, there's like one more new trade and it's about Valkyrie, who, who I wouldn't be too excited about, but I'm sure it's... Ah. 
I'm sure it's way better than other it's champion in raid. Okay, this is gonna be the last fight of today. Let's get the win. We'll end past 4850. Might not be the most um most insane video, but we didn't lose points, we gained experience. We'll be happy with it. Not happy, but we will live with this, I guess. Happy was maybe a bit overstatement. He's going for goal second team. I could go with both Angkor and uh, Arbiter, to be honest. Yeah, let's go with them. I'll decide what Nugara I'll go after. I see what he picks, but I guess he doesn't have Duchess and he's going for full go second team, so why would we go for go second team in that that situation? My Arbiter might not be faster than any other speed champion, but it's probably gonna be faster than his Duchess, so. And even if it isn't, it's gonna be it's gonna be faster than his nukers and he doesn't have any speed threat in this team. Wait, he has Sifi, so I guess he did pick the Duchess so that we can take it and save Sifi all the way until end. That's a weird choice. But so he does have Sifi. What are we going to do? I think we're going to go with Xena in this situation. Rodos is a no-go, but we could go with Xena and ban the Harima. But I don't know if we even have the damage to kill him, to be honest. He's rocking that double reviver and Wukong hit super hard. And he also does have the darts as passive. Come on, let's let's get a win at the end. We can do this. Yeah, so he opened with the CPA1, but yeah, he also has to do it on Duchess because he basically can't use any skills. Okay, now this gets interesting. Okay, good. So we, we moved with Polymorph before Sifi. We're still fine. We're totally fine. Even if we get feared by the UDK, it's still gonna be fine. We're gonna, gonna cut in with Ankara and cleanse it, I think. I hope we go before Wukong. As long as we go before Wukong, we're good. We're totally fine. Okay, so... Hmm. Yeah, what am I saying? We have the passive anyway, so... We need to use... Ah! Wukong went before us. Well... We still have chances. We... Uh, yeah, let's not use that revive just yet. We can do the Ankara revive. So it kind of depends. Ah, I I hope this Wukong goes before my Ankara, but it might not work out that way. Ah, I think we're gonna get a loss. Looking bad. Yeah, I have we lost. Never gonna get a turn. Well, it, it is what it is. It is way too easy to counter me and 
I'm not proud of that, but it happens. Anyway, weird, weird video today. Very high ups and downs. At the end, we got totally demolished by everybody. But at the start of the video, we were also winning really hard. I think we probably still gained maybe a couple points in the end, but probably was 50-50% win rate. Anyway, I'm gonna wait for the two new champions that we got. Marius the Gallant and uh, Armands, but probably probably we'll, we will get Marius in six months and uh, Armands in like two or three weeks, so... I'm hyped up for them. Probably not gonna get them anytime soon though, so... I'm just gonna salivate about it inside my head. But yeah, that, that's it for this video. If you if you think Stalus is a great champion and Tara should get buffed, then tell me all about it in comments. But that's it. I'm gonna take a nap. See ya.